we have a quorum, um, but however, 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 any action of the Board of Appeals has to be uh, supported by a majority of the membership of the board, which under our statute is five. So uh, any action you take tonight would have to be would have to be supported by unanimously by three members. I don't, I don't know if the applicants want to proceed um, on that basis or not. I, uh, as far as I know, no. Okay. <laughs> that, I, I think that, that will be up to, they're going to have to elect a chair right now. <laughs> That will be up to the chair. So wait one second. First of all, I, I need a who wants to be chairman. <laughs> uh, Angie, uh, it looks like there's folks in the waiting room meeting. Is that correct? Okay. Yeah. So I, I think what you've done, in, uh, I was told what you had done in the past meetings is someone moves to nominate someone as chair and then someone seconds that motion and then you vote. Yeah. You guys keep asking me to update and I'm not, it's not the good time. Well, there's not many people there. <laughs> Well, that's just the people running it, right? Yeah, but there's like that chair is empty. That did you mute participants? Thank you. Sorry, Evie. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, if uh, Ms. Zeth thing is willing, um, I make a, a motion to have Lindsay Zeth thing be the uh, chair for this evening, uh, based on her uh, experience uh, in engineering and uh, other uh, functions for the city. Second that motion. All in favor. <laughs> Aye. Aye. Motion carries. All right, Rick, I'm gonna need your help walking through the meeting, but I believe we start with Pledge of Allegiance. Correct. All right. Allegiance to the flag. To the flag. Republic, one nation, under God, under God, under God. will be the blind leading the blind. <laughs> yeah. Bear with us tonight, please. Um, I believe uh, first item would be meeting minutes of roll call. Roll call. Roll call thank you. Uh, roll call, please. Okay. Evie Dundas. Here. Present. Stevie Miner. Here. Lindsay Zefton. Present. Okay, now meeting minutes. <laughs> Can I get a motion to adopt the meeting minutes from our last meeting? I would move that the meeting minutes of our last meeting, April 3rd, be approved and adopted. Second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, so we are on to PLZBA 2024-0017. It is 813 First Avenue um, and is looking for an area of variance. Is the applicant here and wish to speak? I'm on, uh, oh, do we have a microphone? Podium and a microphone, yes. <laughs> Yep, see. Good evening. My name is Neil Pallone. I'm an architect working with the owner of 813 First Ave. Um, it's uh, an empty lot. They're doing a two unit new construction build. Um, it's in a two family zoning. 
but we have a waterfront setback, waterfront district overlay, and that has caused uh, the need for some area variances because the dimensions conflict. There's conflicting requirements. So we're actually looking for two area variances. The first one, the first variance is for section 28541.a requires 720 square feet of the principal use to be constructed on the ground floor. Our ground floor is in a floodplain. So what we are asking and what the building code asks is to minimize the amount of habitable space that is built in the floodplain. So in our case, we have an entry, stairs, if you can imagine, the house is on stilts to get, to get the house out of the floodplain. So there's a piece that comes down and we'd like to keep that at like 300 whatever square feet as opposed to 720 square feet. Okay, there was another variance, right? Right. Well, maybe. So I can't get an interpretation. We can't, no one seems to want to interpret this next section, which is a view shed protection standard from section 285-45D.2, which states that there shall be an opening of at least 30 feet between buildings to provide unobstructed view corridors to the river. Streets and alleys perpendicular to the river may count towards that 30 feet. So we are on a corner. So we have 30 feet in one direction, but we're less than 30 feet in the other direction. Now, when I read this, it is not clear to me whether it has to be 30 feet from any building or we are required to provide one instance of 30 feet, in which case, since we're on the corner, we're allowed to count the street. You follow the issue here? Do you yes. have a picture or a photograph? I took a drive up there. I just want to make sure I'm on the same page mentally that you're talking about. Thank you. So there's no house on this lot. It's vacant. And this is the nearest house, which is the last house on the left going north on 121st. 123rd. Talking about this first ad. I'm sorry, first ad is what I'm talking about. So, yeah, so it's the very last one right across the street. Is what part? Yep. But this does not apply to you. No, but you're just over here. That's so These lot widths, 35 feet, 40 feet, required 30 feet. Fit this in your, it seems like it's written for your projects, maybe more down. In my reading of that code, which I'll pull, and I'm trying to pull up, it was, yeah, Hudson Riverfront Development. Um, I interpret it basically to allow the public to still have the view shed of the Hudson River, so a 30 foot separation. So that's not required on the, you know, for your street side. No, no separation is required because you've got the street, right? Um, and that provides the view shed, the, you know, the boat launches right there. 
but I did interpret it that it was required um, between the two adjacent structures. At least that's how I did. So, right. To reduce it from 30 to five. Yeah, so my question, I guess we grab the microphone again, just so everyone recording can pick you up. Um, my question um, was, there's no side setback required, so you could be adjacent to the property line. Um, so basically you're requesting more of a variance than you need. It's how I'm seeing this, is that correct? No, it's the other, no, it's the other way around. You're, re you're requesting a relief of 25 feet. If you were to push the building adjacent to the property line along 20, 123rd Street, then you would need- no, we're, at the, we're at our setback limit, that's my understanding. Side setbacks, zero. That, would that be the front side? There's a, we, we, yeah, we have a corner lot which has different stadiums. Where the, we- Front side setback? Yeah. Yeah, here, this might help. Oh, thank you. All right, so here's our here's our property line. Right. And I think we need 10 total. So we could okay. So yeah, if what you're saying is we should move the building all the way to the edge to the limit on this side. Yeah. But then you'd have no space between you and the last house on the street. There is no last house on the street. It's the end the their property is the board lunch. Yeah. Prior. My mic is on or off, <laughs> but sorry. Okay, so part of the reason why we placed the building where we did is we have an existing driveway. Mm -hmm. There's all sorts of complications that send us down regulatory uh, dominoes if we make a new driveway on this site. So we're trying to reuse the existing driveway. And if we do what you've suggested, which theoretically could happen, we're gonna end up with structure in the middle of the existing driveway. What are which, those regular, like what are those dominoes? Like, would it be additional planning, permitting from yeah. other agencies? Yes, like planning board. Uh, me, I don't think DEC is involved in this, but. It's been a while. We've been going through this for a long time. All right. So you've already gotten site plan approval. No, we're not required to go to plan. So I don't want to trigger plan. Moving the drive. Moving the driveway. Touching the ground triggers. Angie, do you remember going through this? We we stripped out. We were going to do. We had a, a original application had. Uh, an extended driveway, hardscape, some other stuff mm -hmm. done. We took all that out specifically to avoid the complications. Complications uh, related to the uh, the check regarding uh, uh, remediation issues. I don't. I don't think so. Okay. I think we're under the limit, right? So I don't think that's like kind of the state level stuff. I, programming. I think we're okay with that. I just remember going through. So there's a driveway. The driveway is here. That's correct. But Lizzie is proposing of moving it. Um, right, so way. go back to the driveway. So right now our building sits essentially on the edge of this. And if we move it out to here, six feet, we're in the middle of that driveway. Look, at the end of the day, if that's really. If you move it this way, you're going to be somewhere here. Is that what not, you're saying? No, not that far. That's the problem. It's going to split the difference. Anyway, that's the logic of why we picked, right? Because we're required for that 10 feet. I'm not sure I read the code as it's 30 foot from any building ever. It just doesn't make sense. Right? Like that entire neighborhood. The neighborhood that we're in, we can't, like the, the setback, the view quarter setback becomes larger than the lots. Sorry. 
right? So these buildings would be required to have 30 feet between them, 30 feet between them, 30 feet between them. Well, and those are existing structures before the new zoning code yeah. was developed. Right. My point is somewhere at the beginning of the zoning code is the idea is to try to match as best you can the character of the neighborhood you're in. But we have a con some conflicting agendas. One is the view corridor, the waterfront overlay for the unobstructed views. Another is flood resilient construction. Does, does it help at all that we're lifting the building so you can see under it? <laughs> I just thought I'd, I thought I'd try it. Yeah, I mean, so it's, uh, do I, did you guys read through this section of code? Do you want me to read it? That'd be yeah. helpful for you guys. Um, land shall be developed in such a way as to maximize public views yeah. to the Hudson River, provide new opportunities at the river's edge and make view corridors available from public streets and public spaces. Site layout and design shall consider public views and establish view corridor locations and shall also consider the important views of the city from the Hudson River. There shall be an opening of at least 30 feet between buildings to provide unobstructed okay. view corridors Stop. to the river. Singular. Singular. And go back. Right between buildings. 30 feet between the building to your left and your structure. Mm -hmm. Yes, an entire. And 30 feet shrunk down to five. Which is yes. Right. Is that correct? Yes. Am I getting you, this right? You are correct, yes. Similar to the rest of the neighborhood. That's the idea. Well, the rest I, of the neighborhood predates the code. So again, I'm trying to figure out a, a logic. And you didn't go to plan. We submitted for planning, and then they said, first they said we had to go, and then we submitted, and they said, no. How far uh, apart are the buildings that currently exist? Uh, anywhere from about five feet. They get wider, 15 feet. They do vary, right? So we're, we're gonna be building that sort of ghosty box there. But if you look at, right, that's a 30 foot lot. So that's about five feet. It's about five feet. Some of them are bigger. Right, that's about 20, 25 feet. Oh, here, look. It varies. So it, it varies, yep. Can you go back to the house on the end? The last house next to the lot? Put us this in one? front of the black car. This one? Yes. There you go. Uh, are there structural reasons why you couldn't shrink the footprint of the building? To shrink our area. Yeah, shrink shrink your area, move it to the adjacent. I mean, I realize your your back of your building is not twenty five foot high water mark. You can encroach on your center line to kind of change basically your your footprint of the building without losing too much square footage but like so we already we already reduced it to get the frontage requirement ratio correct which i think is one to five or 100 foot 20 foot out of it so your your front percent is Well, it's not the setback, it's the frontage. But right? we, we're, we're not allowed to take up the entire width of the lot, right? So we shrunk it to minimum. We're trying to build as much as possible. We're already capped going up because we're lifting the floor. Because um, you basically, you're not maximizing what you have on the site because you can have a zero foot front setback. Right, but then our building ends up that's where we end up, way up here. That's going to look dopey, and I think it's going to hurt the character of the neighborhood. So we tried to balance these considerations. Because you are correct. By right, we can build like basically right through the middle of that corner. 
I don't think it's good for the neighborhood. So we've already gone through a round of trying to balance all these dimensions. Yeah, but what, what is also driving it, I guess, is the, the footprint of the building itself. Can you shrink the footprint of the building? What do you mean by can? <laughs> We've already shrunk it. We've already shrunk it from what we want to do. Okay. Did you guys have other questions? Yeah, I've got a couple questions. Just to go back to what Mr. Morrissey expressed tonight, if it's not unanimous, staff, if you wanted to table this and come back, that's your option. The second question would be, if I'm looking at the lot on the proposed footprint for the building, to the right of the building, do you have 30 feet to the street or do you not? The street counts to the, yes, we do. Then why not just go from five feet to 10 feet and move the building another five feet to the right? So, there are other site considerations that let us choose this variance. The difference between a 20 foot variance and a 25 foot variance. I think I understand your point, which is maximize. That would help the arguments that we did everything we absolutely could at the expense of other engineering considerations. Yep. Evie, do you have a question? Uh, yeah, uh, along the lines of feasibility or economics, uh, of feasible economics, um, if you were to make any of the proposed changes, how would that affect the uh, potential economics of this investment? Right, so we're trying to make use of the existing driveway, which is a concrete driveway. If we have to build a new driveway somewhere else, which we would if we move, we kind of shimmy the building over. It's a new curb cut, it's new surfaces, it's all, it's all, all that has to be considered. And if the footprint shrinks of the building. Then rental income goes down. I didn't hear your answer. Rent, rental income goes down, it's two units. It's likely to be owner occupied by one one of the units. Um do you guys want to discuss? Yeah. Um initial thoughts. My only initial thought is move the footprint to the right, go from that five feet to maybe 10. Mm -hmm. Give yourself a little more room between the existing structure on the south side of the building. That would be my thought. Yeah, I mean, the first variance of, um, you know, the ground floor area because of the nature of it being in the floodway makes a lot of sense to me. Oh, They're, no problem. Yeah. Right. Um, the, while I think there are some buildings that are closer together, you know, in keeping with the new zoning code of having more separation between buildings along the riverfront, right. I'd want to see a greater separation. I don't, I'm, thinking I'm not of, opposed to I'm a thinking of fire emergency accessibility between the two structures yes. i mean 10 10 to 15 is kind of typical along those that will count for a driveway right that's what i found is kind of typical along that street that's a very good point um and that modest modest chain you got plenty of room on the right please Mike. <laughs> um, 
so I was going to make a couple of comments too, but oh, right. last la last thing to clarify it. I think I know where this is all going. <laughs> um, here's a site plan diagram that illustrates where we're building, mm -hmm. what we're proposing to build, which is far less than front setbacks or rear setbacks require in order to match the neighborhood. So I just want, like, if it turns into shaving off square footage to meet the view shed requirements, it's going to push us in another direction. I think it's to the detriment of the neighborhood. Yeah, I have a, before you put it to the public comment, yeah. um, I think would be very useful uh, instead of like all these hypothetical um, inquiries, if we had, um, if you will, a, a, a more of a uh, cost-benefit analysis of, you know, if this change occurred, how much it would cost and what would be the uh, changes that would be required and something, some uh, 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 more of a, a concrete analysis for us to refer to so we could see the balance of, you know, what's in the neighborhood now versus, you know, the, the investment that has to be made versus safety issue, access, emergency vehicles, whatever, you know, just to, to get it, whatever. So the section we're talking about is a view shed requirement, not a emergency services access. Yeah, so it is view shed, it is not, yeah, emergency access. View shed between the two buildings is what is requiring the 30 feet. Right. So that's well, correct, that's what we should be considering. If, if we were building this a block inland, this requirement wouldn't even exist and we'd be permitted to build right to the wild line. Just, just to clarify. So I don't want to make up requirements. We're talking about, you know, modifications and you're saying, well, it might cause a curb cut here. So, yeah. So for example, a curb cut in the driveway is $30,000. Is how much? 30,000. It's 10,000 just to do the curb cut. Ask Carlo. It's crazy. Would you like me to send you the quote? I don't agree with it. That's why we're trying. I don't agree with it. That's why we're trying to work with what we got. Um, the other thing is the client's willing to take a contingent approval if we move it all the way north, if that would get it done. So we'd abandon the driveway. In other words, take the footprint of the building and move the building north as far as possible as far as possible because you have no existing structure to the north side correct so well it, we still need a variance according to current interpretation yes so is that Right, we can only allow, we can only change the variance one and a half feet, or it would have to be a second variance, which would have to be re-advertised and you'd have to come back next month in order for you to, in order for us to say, move it to the property line, it's another variance. Okay, so <laughs> let, let's, forget, let's, let's forget about the bureaucracy for a second. Is, is that more palatable conceptual wise? So maybe see you next month. If required. Your call, my friend. Okay. What about the other one? What about the first request? <laughs> we'll figure out microphone. <laughs> I'm a little bit concerned about building it up to the the very edge of the street right away. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know what that implicates in terms of um i mean i, I think the, part of the reason for the setback is so is to maintain the right of way both for pedestrians and vehicles and so I, i'm just you know as a city attorney i'm always interested in preserving the municipal right of way and, and i don't know how this how this if he actually built right up to the edge of the street we're we yeah. wouldn't be building right up to the edge of the street. We'd build right up to the limit of our setback, right. which is forward of all the other buildings. No, the, the, you're on a corner lot, so you have two setback mm -hmm. requirements, correct? Right. And, 
and on the this is 123rd Street we're looking at right here. If you look behind you, this might help as well. So this is a neighboring building. This is what we're proposing. Right. So we're allowed to. What is front? What is the front setback? Front setback is zero. Oh, here. You can take that one. I have another copy. Right. So we're permitted to build out to here. The front on the corner lot. Yep. Okay. Going in one direction, and the side is five. So then we. It'd be five off of that. So the 123rd Street is five foot set. Yes, but the 123rd Street has a lot of, I don't even know who would own that with the city on that, whatever that width is. It's a ton of space from our property to the actual curb. I believe the city owns that. Right, so then similarly going to the front, it's not that we're, we would build to the street, we build to the possibly build to the by right front setback, which pulls that building forward. In front of all the other buildings. Yes. Which as a designer, I don't I don't think is great. There's no measurement on here, but it looks to be like 15 feet from the property line to like the edge of pavement is what it looks to be. Just so you guys know. I'm eyeballing off the drawing. It's not dimension. Yeah, it's dimension on the survey, but it's 10.3. Does that sound right? Or are you saying 15? It's. Uh, um, your, the, this application. Um, just that drawing. It's not mentioned, but about. I think. Just that mentioned. Oh, going, going to, yeah, going to 123rd. Yeah, that's that's like. How much room do you have on this proposed plan and public access? So, public access would be the sum of that 6.6 six plus the 12.4, so 1810, 19 feet. From the edge of our core, let's say, to our lot line. So five feet north. That closes. The that's not well. Right. Well, remember we have two stories. That's up above, right? So we got to shift the whole block. You follow what I'm saying? It's not just the at grade. Is this still accurate, more or less, as far as an elevation? Uh, yes, but that wasn't submitted with this application. Yes. <laughs> yes, it was. Based for the elevation. Um, the, all the dominoes. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just, I wanted to see what the elevation was. It happened to be in the other one. I would have asked for it tonight if it hadn't been seen. I'll show, I'll show you some renderings after. <laughs> No, the other dominoes are triggering site plan review. Like right now, we do not require site plan review. As soon as we put a driveway in, do something else to the ground, off you go. We're just trying to get started with this building where we've been here twice. Well, this is our second time. It's been a year in the approvals process. Angie can speak to mm -hmm. the, everyone's, it's new zoning cover, trying to figure it out. Everyone's trying to figure it out. So, and we're just trying to get something going. Yeah. We've met with the city engineer. We've talked with economic development, new commissioner. Um, we're just trying to get something started here. What were your thoughts today? From, I'm sorry, from who? The engineer says, why are we putting this, these people through the ringer? Economic development says it's the law, just do what it says. But no one's interpreting the law with us. You're caught. Yeah. But I mean, it's the same thing that you guys are caught in the middle, right? Like you're you're trying to negotiate like 
what's the hardest that you can try? Redesign the whole thing so you can meet someone. Else. Well, I think that's stupid. So I'm here. But I don't have hard numbers, right? Like you don't believe that a curb cut costs ten thousand dollars. I can show you the quote. If you'd like me to email it to you. I'm astounded as well. This is what I'm me too. And if we were to do a new curb cut. Off to planning you go. And now everyone else has their pitchforks out. So we're just trying to get the zoning done so we at least know what we can build. And then we can layer up stuff like, I don't know, a shrub, a new driveway, whatever, that will send us to planning because we're on a corner lot or whatever they say. Did you guys have any other questions before um, I, I kick it to public comment? Uh, just one uh, thought to flesh out the, the approach of a conditional uh, approval. Um, any, any you know, thoughts to flesh out that approach? I believe that the only conditional approval we could offer tonight is that it be shifted one, one and a half feet to the north. If we are requesting or prefer the applicant come back to us with a proposal that ships it closer to the side, um, the sideline, the front sideline, then it requires a second variance. Yes. Building or ship. So if the building were shifted five feet to the north, that would go to that dark black line that where your where the cursor is. And the area beyond it, is that all part of the right of way? Yeah, you say right of way. It's it's not ours, it's basically just grass. And then there's a side block. That are used to My interpretation is yes, that is the public right of way. Right. So As an engineer, not a surveyor. <laughs> it's not all street, grass. Correct. Where it says curb is where the streets are. There's there's a lot of space before the other. If you go, if, if you go back to the googly, take a look. If the city were to put it, want to put a sidewalk in on that side, there would still be sufficient room and right of way. For them to do that but, but and you don't want to do that because it's a hill yeah hey, now that, it'd be that shows it bit, yeah it'd be about 15 feet back from the curb 10 to 15 feet back from the curb. right so my without looking at the survey is we're probably up to where this was built right maybe there were some steps here or something back in the day that'd be my guess is that's the property line Correct. So it's, it's kind At of the edge of the green where it beats the street. Is there a curb there or is there not a curb? Yes, there is. There is a curb and there is not a curb. Some of it's curbed. Is this what you're talking about? <laughs> curb? No curb. There's a little curb. Just the, topo. The, the, the topo there is brutal. What? Top, the topography, the hill starts. Right, again, we were looking to just, we've got a driveway. Yeah, I think because you're adjacent to the public street, the preferences, but sorry, I keep coming back. I wanna hear the public comment to yeah, see if yeah. there are other people that are commenting on it. Um, is there anyone in the room that would like to comment for or against this project? All right, Angie, is there anyone online that has comments related to this project? Um, Ellen Barnum does, if I'm, you can hear me. Yes, we can. Can you oh, say your name, uh, address or approximate location of where you live and then tell us your comment? I, I live in the first building and uh, second floor of the building that's on the south side of 813. I live at 811. Okay. Uh, just, just as a level history, a person that lived before in that house, it was a, it was a two-story house, but it was a single family home. He had two vehicles. That's one of my concern is um, this building, one of the variances is going to be three stories. And I'm, I think I'm assuming that the bottom story is going to be where the 
where the pillars will be that'll raise the house up above the floodplain. It won't be a living space. Then it will be two, two family above that. Two floors above. Yeah, two floors, two family. Correct. Okay. Um, then I was concerned about parking because, I mean, the guy that lived there before, single family, he had two vehicles. One was in the driveway. The other one was on the street. If this is going to become a two-family home, um, I'm wondering where the parking is. Is it going to be underneath the house? Is the house being raised up enough that the parking will be underneath the house? The the Yes, they, the driveway will go underneath the structure. Okay. Okay, then... Um, and there will be a site you were talking about bringing the house forward. Will there still be a sidewalk? Uh, yeah, the sidewalk is located within the right of way. Um, so okay. nothing we'd be talking about here today would impact the, the sidewalk. Okay. And then you're going to be move. You're talking about moving the house pop possibly north. So that would me mean it would be further away from the, from us, the Southern house, because that public right away is important. You were talking about fire that house burned down. And I was here living here when that house burned down and the fireman said that if the wind was right, that our house would have probably been involved. So it was, it was imperative to me that it was nice that if you will move it north, it'll be even further away if in God forbid, in, in case of fire. For both houses, you know, the closer you are, of course, the more opportunity there's for a fire to, to spread between two houses. But you are talking about moving the house further north away from the house on the south. So making that right away between the two houses even wider than it may already have been when the previous structure was there. That's what we're discussing tonight. The, the variance okay. request about the distance. Okay your structure and this proposed structure yes okay i understand that um my my neighbor she lives down the first floor i don't know if she has any questions no i think you pretty much covered it okay except that he didn't answer all those questions yeah well yeah he didn't answer all the questions on the on the i think it was the environmental thing um the shoreline but i i don't know how important those are to the the very the zoning and variance it was an environmental questionnaire that that was included in his documentation yeah, the seeker form. Did you guys have any comments or questions related to the seeker form for the applicant? I asked um, wait a minute. I just me pull that up. There were a couple questions that he he didn't answer, and I guess it was an, it's an environmental impact um, form that he's filling out. Well, number eight, I don't think he answered. Number eight, will the directly will the proposed action result in a substantial increase in traffic? On, above present levels of course it will and it will because there will be another extra family than than there was before um like i said it was one person it was it was i think it was considered a single family home and um mm -hmm. on question 14 there's no answer 14 he didn't identify typical habitat types that occur on or are likely to be found on the project site it is a shoreline. It is it is a wetland. I think it would be considered a wetland. Um, or let's see, urban. It, I think it's nominal whether or not he checked those boxes, but they are they are part of the form. Oh, mm -hmm. I did. I do have a question about moving the 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 thing north. That is a boat launch, and the person that lived before he told me that part of his property, on the northern side was taken over by the city and i think it was i think he even included that in case they wanted to put a sidewalk in there and i think you did mention that so a portion of that northern border is i think city property or city right away uh, what we have before us is um property lines completed by a surveyor recently uh -huh. confirm one okay what time, what year was the survey completed? Within the last few years? Okay, yeah, so the, the property lines we're looking at are a recent survey. Okay, and, they, and when the surveyor comes in, he knows where the city right away is and where the property, actual property line is too. That's part of what yeah. his information is when he does. Okay, I understand that. Thank you. Any other comments? Not from us. Thank, Thank you, you very much.
Uh, is there anyone else online looking for uh, that has comments related to this project? Mm -hmm. No? Is there anyone that was in chat was commenting or was that? Oh, that's Amanda. Yes, yeah, so they it was two people that was listening, the first floor and second floor. Yeah, and somebody was in uh in the chat why is this not going to planning commission? Because there are certain things that require planning commission approval and certain yeah. things that don't. <laughs> but, yeah. Yes. Um any follow-up questions for the applicant following public comment? My other of you. Um, Are they still online? Okay. All right. Does the applicant have any more, uh, any information to address the issue of um, the traffic uh, count, anything? raised by the public comment? It's it's my opinion that that traffic, that form we use if you're gonna build a Walmart. So this is a two family. It's, I understand people's concerns, but this is negligible. I've been to conferences and they acknowledge that, but since these mm -hmm. things are, are checked. Uh, we won't keep a driveway. So we're about to lose that driveway. So we will be parking on the street. There's no parking requirement for zoning. That's a good answer. Um, yeah, so traffic engineer, usually uh, trips of 100, more, 100 or more trips during the peak hour is what is considered substantial and triggers a traffic impact study or something like that. Um, yeah, so... <laughs> Um, I would propose uh, that we table this um, and let the applicant come back with, encourage the applicant to come back with a revised proposal for a, basically two variances to move this adjacent to the Northern property line. I would- Northern, yes. If that's viewed as a, a motion, I would second that. I'll make a motion to. Well, well, well I mean, should, is, it, is it better to withdraw it? Maybe the attorney can help. We will, if we have to come back anyway, where we can draw. Or we or can table it. It doesn't matter. Whatever. Matter. And if we change our proposal to apply, right, then we're not coming back. Who who do do you guys know who interprets this requirement? No, I don't. I don't either, and nobody at the city knows either. No. I wish I could tell. Oh. Yeah, let me tell. If we correct, correct. I don't think the view. I don't. I'm. There's something wrong with the view shed requirement. We're, we're, right. So it's really the question we're talking about. Is a variance for uh, 20 feet or 25 feet? That's it. Which, which is effectively get a negative now or well, wouldn't you, if I, dem if I demanded an answer, if I demand an answer, you guys have to go. So what you expect what you've explained, you have experienced a, a, a long history or a uh, history, and we understand that, but we want to um, see what can be done in giving you options. That's, that's how I see it.
Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> Table that thing. Um, does the attorney know who would interpret the view shed requirement or who we can talk to to interpret that? Decision on how to apply the state for building ordinance is made by the building board of the council from the city of Kansas. And that's why you're here. You're here for them to interpret it. Right. So, do the other two members agree that we're required to provide 60 feet through our property? That is 50 feet wide. Help. We will <laughs> agree to confer with council on how to address these inquiries. Yeah, I guess it's not entirely fair. It's not like I'm going to take your answer and apply it, but I'm, I'm honestly, and, and my client has been talking to everyone trying to negotiate something to build here. And it's, we just keep going around, right? And it's, everyone has different ideas about what's important. Fire, you should. And I think your explanations today have helped us clarify or, or approach uh, clarification, but we're not there yet. Fair enough. Right. So, does that, I mean, we're trying, right? Like mm -hmm. the, the areas, the reason we're not quick to, to cut the building size, we already negotiated, we thought, but there's not, not with you. Well, facts, you have to apply the law to facts right but clarify those yeah so we're, we're committed to build something even clunkier and bigger we don't think it's right for the neighborhood and we would like some consideration for that session maybe that's what i'm trying to say next time yeah well and i think you know i'm also factoring i mean a number of other variances have already been granted for this property and so we just want to make sure that we're re you know Reducing the impact to neighbors, et cetera, and, and granting any additional expenses for the property. Um, but I at least say it, you know, I'm favorable of the, the ground variance. If you I'm happy to make a motion on that tonight, or you can table the entire application and well, we can't can we we can't we, proceed to building permit regardless. So. Okay. Thank you, Rick. Also you all well requires. Correct. And that's yes. So I'll make a motion to table this application until the next meeting. I will second that motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. <laughs> oh, did you, is this an extra copy we can keep or do you want to take this with you? Whatever. I can I can hold on to it. Right. You don't want it. I'll add it to my stack. <laughs> um, I think so. I think we're gonna. <laughs> <laughs> I want this back. Oh, I'll, I'll I'll hold on. Thank you. I have a good evening. It might be helpful for us to get or get cut. That's this is these all, are in the application. Online, the latest. Oh, yeah. yeah, these two are in the right. latest application. Right, but the I didn't bring it. Right, right, but there's right. We'll we'll confirm. We're good. Thank you. Yeah. Have a good night. Thank you. Okay. How am I doing so far, Rick? <laughs> All right, next item on the agenda.
um, PLZBA 2024-0018-558 River Street. This is for a use variance and area variance. Good evening. Good evening. So my name is Nathaniel Betty. I'm with the applicant uh, Flanagan Square ESG Partners, uh, who owns the building at 558 River Street. So it's the future home of Bart and Girls from Troy. I know, Angie, could you pull up my um, submissions that I brought in? So I need an a area variance for some tenant signage that we're looking to install above the entry to the premises. We could start with that. That's the simpler of the two variances we're asking for. It's the next one down. Is, uh, so that's a cut sheet of the signage for our, our tenant bargain groceries, a uh, um, uh, low cost but great quality grocery store from Utica who we're bringing to Troy in a, a very important project to us as a developer. Troy is a food desert right now with no grocery store in existence in the entirety of downtown. So Barton Grocery will help solve that problem. So to get them to have the right uh, branding and presence in this market felt a sign of the scale that we've uh, shown in this mock-up, the next page down, Angie, is needed just to give them a good market presence and have some good curb appeal for people driving by on River Street. So this faces south onto River Street as you go underneath the Hoosier Street Bridge and go north. Um, and that's our new storefront entrance that we built on the south side of the property that directly communicates with our parking area to the south that comes in off of uh, who's it for ease of access. So there's a use or an area variance um, that we're asking for just to have the scale of the sign be appropriate to the place we're mounting it. If we had kept it to the size that was allowed under the current zoning, we felt it would kind of feel out of scale to what's here for the background. Anything else? We got a question. We're not interrupting. Can we go back to that picture, please? Over the main entrance. Next one down. That's a rendering, correct? This is a rendering, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that is what you're proposing. Yes. And what you're saying is you want to go from 48 square feet to that, which reflects the 70 square feet. Correct. But that would reflect the size of the 70 square feet relative and in proportion to the building. Yes. Got it. Thank you. Is that similar to the sign in Utica? They have a different um, setup in Utica. So this is a, a use of a historic building for Barton Grocery Troy. Utica is a new construction that was built about five years ago. That They just have a, a sign over their entrance canopy. So different type of canvas, I would say, for how it's set up there. I don't know, if Angie, if you can look up the Utica store in Google. What's that right? um, what is their address out there? You're better off just Googling Barton Grocery Utica. That's not the store. No, well, yes, that's the other entrance off of River Street. So when this building was Smith Beauty, that was the main entrance that people use. It was a wholesale uh, beauty supply place. So there was a small retail area just inside maybe these first two windows. This sign is here. We temporarily put a new graphic over this just to show people it's coming, but that's not the permanent signage that we want people to enter through. The new entrance comes down at the south side, down over this way. I don't think the entrance canopy is built in Google Earth yet, but that's this is where that canopy entrance is constructed now. So everyone can park here off street, come in off of Kuzik, where we have a DOT lot that we lease under the bridge. And that also flows through here where we have it's a 30 car um, parking lot. So does the sign stop moving? <laughs> I'm trying to gain a perspective. Is the sign on the blank wall to the right of the door facing the parking lot? It's right here. 
where we want to put it. Is it hanging out or is it? No, it's flush. It's flush to the wall. It's not an extruded box for backlighting. So it fixes to the blank wall. Yes. Got it. I don't have any other questions. Am I correct that there are two actions here, one for the sign square footage and one for the murals? Yes. So I can talk about the mural now. If, or should, can we go through this motion first? And they're kind of separate issues. There are two. There's a use variance and an area variance. This is the area variance. The use variance is the other side. Correct. I would rather discuss them all together and we can handle our That's fine. So Angie, could you go back to my other submission? And I think I sent you, I might not have sent you a photo of the completed north wall, but Google Earth will have the canvas I'm talking about. So what we're, um, we have a small conundrum with how the zoning code is written and the type of art installation we'd like to do. So Kevin Clark is here with me, um, who's our artist, who has done several wonderful murals throughout Troy and throughout the Capital District and all over the place. And so where's the furthest south you've gone for? So all up and down the East Coast, and Kevin does wonderful work. He actually did the mural for our um, food hall downstairs in this building, River Street Market, that looks fantastic south, uh, uh, looking south on River Street. So we've asked Kevin, could you come and do something similar for the north wall of 558 River Street, which right now is just a blank stucco gray wall. And there's two reasons we wanted to put an art installation there. One is just beautification to make the intersection of Vanderheiden and River just a more pleasant space to walk through and interact and just put some beautification into that side of 558 River that forever that we've driven by it has just been graffiti and overgrown vines and everything. So we now have there a loading dock that is going to help feed the grocery store with fresh products every day or every couple of days. But we want to beautify the backdrop of it with some art installation. So this is just a sample board that we came up with for different types of um, work that we would propose putting on there. But the way the zoning code is written, if we have anything in the art installation that has to do with the operations of the tenant, which is a grocery store, it is treated as advertising and not as art. So it required the use variance. So we filled out the application and came there tonight just to go through that and explain that's what we have to do now is go through that process. This is just an idea sheet of what we were coming up with. Can you scroll down a little bit more, Angie? It's coming to the bottom stuff is cut up, but we're trying to brighten up the uh, north wall of the building and not have it be just a blank gray monolith like it is right now. When we did our historic renovation for the building, we got the Park Service to agree. It was an old, um, just parched finish. Because I think there was another building up against that in the corner of Vanderheiden Street on the old tax maps that we found. So they let us leave it in that state. What we're wanting to do now that we're almost done with the project, we just got our CO a couple of weeks ago from the code inspector officials. We want to get it ready to open for bargains operations. And I think this will help make it a more welcoming and appealing place to shop than just leaving it a big gray blank space. It also helps track from people who would think of putting tags on it. And that's been a problem for us in not just this building, but a lot of our holdings in Troy. If you leave open blank areas that just don't have anything on them, it's like a moth to a flame for someone with a can of spray paint that wants to put their own mark on things, which some people like it, we really don't. We'd rather put something more like this on that wall to make it a more appropriate art um, installation. And I think Kevin is one of the best people to do that. Questions? Would that artist rendition occupy the entire north wall? Yes. Or would it be like a picture and the rest of the north wall as a frame around. We'd like to do the whole wall. Um, could you go to Google Earth, Angie, and just see if we can go around the corner? I don't think it's got the current um, view. Just go up the street to Vander Hyden's intersection, and we can peer around the corner to show 
the surface we're talking about. Right, so if you spin around, so this wall has been completely uh, repaired. There was a lot of uh, crumbling bricks exposed. So we re this whole wall stucco. So this is a clean gray canvas. And the new welding dock was built right in this section. So we have this large gray monolithic surface now. What we'd like to do is do the entire surface area from the corner out to the River Street edge with an art installation. Kevin last week just did a mock-up to do just the roundo of Barton Grocery Go up in this corner, but we don't know what our final design is for the mural contents around it. We don't know if we'll do just fresh food. We don't know if we'll do an uh, old time downtown scene of Troy, like Kevin's done some of that. He has one in this building and he's done some in other places. We're trying to figure out the final scheme, but because there's potential for us to do food products as part of the art, the way the code is written, it interprets that as advertising and needs to go through zoning. It can't just be treated as art installation that doesn't have to come for a use variance. Correct. Is the intent to do any other, um, I guess, words, so to speak, other than the grocery store logo? And do you have roughly an idea of what size you intend that to be? It depends. I mean, Kevin's creative, and we go through a lot of different iterations of things before we pick stuff. We did a lot of stuff for the mural on the south stair tower of this building before we ended up with the false window um, display that actually was part of 431 River Street was the building attached to this one that was knocked down in the mid 60s. So we're trying to go through the creative process and figure out what we wanna do. It could be, if you go back to the example sheet, Angie, that we do something that has some text, could just do like the one that says, um, if you go up to the top, this was a Whole Foods in Vernon Hills, Illinois, you could do something like Troy that kind of, emphasizes more of the city that we're in and emphasizes Troy pride, but it also could be a blend of different elements that have this as well. I mean, there's a lot of opportunities, but what we wanted to do is make sure we're not making the wrong step by not coming here in case we do want to include any food associated with the operations of the building, which obviously it is, it's a grocery store. Probably not because bargain Grocery really deals with a wide range of brands, so we wouldn't be sponsored by any um, type of food product or anything. It would all be just any other stuff. Rick, my concern with granting the variance, I like the idea of the murals. My concern with granting a variance is that we open it up to the applicant being able to make the decision after the fact to turn the entire wall into their logo, logo and or provide a bunch of branding. I realize you're saying you're not going to, but right. this thing. So Kevin and I were talking, um, we got our turn at the microphone. So the area of the sign that he's just done a, a chalk outline of, could you go back to Google Earth? I'm sorry to make you go back and forth all the time. There's a round outline that he actually just chalked over here on the corner. That's the extent of Barton Grocery signage branding that we would put there and it was calculator there I think it was 75 square feet if I did my geometry measuring correct it's a nine foot um, diameter circle that he has marked up right now I took a picture of it that I could share the board members So this is a photo of what Kevin has marked up just with tape and chalk. So that would be the extent of Barton Grocery um, verbiage, for lack of a better term. And then the rest, like the um, idea board that we sent in with our application, it would be more of mural type of art installation. So we don't want to plaster the entire wall with just mm -hmm. bargain grocery. I don't think that's 
helpful. We'd like to do more artwork inspired installation that is going to enhance the quality of the neighborhood, add some beauty to a corner that's been neglected for a long time, and just make it a nicer, uh, better curb appeal building for a lot of people to use, which we're, we're excited to open this in the next few months and have the access to healthy food that everyone's been waiting for in downtown for a long time. Rick, can can we put a contingency on this that you know branding essentially is restricted to a certain square footage? Is that a reasonable condition to be placed on approval? I think you could. Well, that's what it is. That's what it is on this, Rick. Is it's a seventy-five square foot circle. It's actually less than that, but that's all we've marked out for what bargain grocery logo would be there but the condition of that maximum size yes and we're happy with that i mean any other questions rick any other questions or comments rick do you have comments information to relay to us <laughs> that you would like to relate give me a microphone You are seeking a use variance. For the other side, for the south for the south side. Because of the way the code is worded, because you might be showing it does it. But then also because we may want to put some food products in the art installation itself because food is being sold in the premises, the code says, treat it as more sign piece, not just an art. I have to see the code. Can you pull up the code section? Because um, you're not going to be advertising specific brands that you're selling. And, and it's, yeah. Because the usual tests for a use variance, you have to meet all four, are that you couldn't get a reasonable return, um, the hardship uh, is unique to your property, uh, the requested variance would not alter the character of the neighborhood, I agree with that, but and the alleged hardship is not self-created. Um, not sure. Yeah, this usually seems like, it seems more like an area variance than a use variance. Yeah. That's how I'm looking at it, but but need to. Send your staff notes too. So wouldn't it just mean that it needs a permit on a variance? Yes. Yeah, so yeah, that is what could we argue that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so these are actually signs that are Then because they did it, they got part of the project. She didn't.
you're allowed to sign your bill, right? Yeah. You're, you're allowed to have advertising in your name. And what just is that? What, just what, so, what is the, so what is the limit on the sign itself? Well, I, I'm, di I'm differentiating between the two here. I don't, okay. I don't think that you can, that it necessarily goes under a use there because the only products that I'd be concerned with are ones that are either branded um, or, uh, and then, then their logo is, is a sign that is governed by our, so it has to be a certain size, right? But I mean, they can have it, but I'm, I'm not sure that the rest of the mural really qualifies as a sign, an advertising sign, if you know what I mean, for purposes of getting a use there. You're interpreting that products is something that's specifically labeled, not as painting an apple and you guys sell apples, is, is how you're interpreting it, if I understand yeah, it yes, correctly. Essentially, yeah. You're name talking, brand products. You're talking about a generic product without the name brand. That's a, that's what that's what they seem to be proposing in this mural. It's sort of like here's a grocery store. We carry Correct. we carry saltines, but maybe not, you know, Kiba or something like that. Um, I'm just having. I don't know. Well, I'm not sure how you meet the test for a use there. With, with, just yeah. Signs exempt from permitting or graphics and murals that but I think they just need a permit. Yeah. Applicants received the PC approval for the part of the grocery piece an area that is for exceeding allowed signed area. We'll see allowed signed area. Well, so if I could. <laughs> so we were one of the last projects to be approved under the old zoning. And the old zoning actually had a larger signage allowance for our district. We used to be Hewisig Waterfront District. So when the zoning changed, the sign allowance was reduced. So if we were submitting this just before the code change a year ago, we actually wouldn't be asking for the area variance for the sign that's going over the front entrance. We would be within the allowed threshold. For whatever reason, the code didn't remember Bargain Grocery was going here when it changed everything. So look, we'll go do the area variance. We don't mind. That's I don't think that's a controversial ask before this board, uh, zoning board. But we want to make sure that when Bargain Grocery opens, they have the market presence that's needed to succeed and that everyone can find them. And I think right. putting these graphics and signs on the building is necessity to mm -hmm. make that happen. And we're trying to help them open more facilities in the capital districts. It's important to do the first one very well so that when we do Albany or Schenectady or wherever else we can find another home for them, people know, oh, that's the guys that opened in Troy and they came from Utica and they're doing all this great stuff for food insecure areas. So we wanna make sure that this first one is done to the highest level. And I think this request from our team is a good way to help ensure that. If uh, the permit route is pursued, um, could a condition be added just to, um, make uh, enforceable uh, or, or certain that there in the future, there would be no specific product branding. I mean, we have the assurances today, but to put it in whatever document. Uh, put it is, in the form of the motion. Well, can we memorialize this basically that we're referring exactly. this back to the city, this element mural back to the city for permitting as long as it is Generic products, no name day parts going forward. Right. How do we do that? <laughs> I, initial concern.
don't have a lot of expertise in this area. Okay, <laughs> but, but my concern is that the test for a use variance, you have to meet all four. Yeah. And you have to, um, it's, it's for, it's, it doesn't seem to me that, that fits. this, this fits really. I mean, it's not, it's not, uh, the, the only part that really fits is the size of the, the signage itself. There's no copy involved in this, in this mural, as far as I know, other than the bargain grocery logo. Uh, there's no reference to, uh, you know, it's not an advertising sign. It's, it's, except for it's it's an identification of the building and what and what it is. It's a grocery store. Um, the mural itself is is as I think the applicant has said of, of beautification, and I don't think that that falls under um, falls under a use variance, at least under our code, right? No, we we all agree. So you agreed on that, right? So. <laughs> so, so I mean, I think that the applicant has to. I think that this should be referred back to the city, to the administration. Pardon? Permits. For for a permitting application. Given um, the first part of the variance that he requests about the sign over the new. That that seems to me uh, easy for you to. That's determinable by this board. Let's but do that. So my only question in reference to that, Rick, is how do I get Kevin to start on the mural? And what, 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 are you, what are you trying to get him to start? As soon as we could get him out there, I have a man left ready for him to jump up there and start so painting. So weather, just for the weather is already suitable? It's pretty nice right now. 71 degrees today. Hmm? Not coming back no. here, no. Who would issue this permit? So I just talked to... Are they going to get angry if he is out there tomorrow painting stuff? That's my. I think you ought to see Carlo first. Okay. Go to code. Yes. Uh, Let's give him a motion. Uh, the. The area variance is well, the first, main sign. We don't have any public comment here. Is there anyone online for public comment? Yeah, Do my due diligence. Yeah, people online. Uh, do we have anyone that would like to make a comment regarding this project? Or something related to bargaining grocery? Yeah, Samantha, I see your question. So, hello. Um, we did put this sign free or, um, proof into our uh, Part 2 amendment for the historic tax credit process, and they approved it, so we're good with them. That's the only approval we have. I'm to sorry. Can you read the question? She's asking, does the Biden grocery proposed art need to go through historic review? So the art does not, because I've done that on this building. They don't <laughs> care as much about murals. The signage does, and the signage has gone through the historic approvals and our amendments we filed with the SHPO and Park Service. Oh, I don't think this is <clears throat> follow the rule of historic history. No, no, we're out of the districts. It's, it's not that. It's they're asking, does the mural have to go through the process? Well, there is a historic district three or four blocks south of us, but we're not. We are on the register now, but that's different than the um, the downtown historic district. That's a city um, layer for planning and zoning. If they wanted to do, sorry, Rick. If they wanted to do the bargain grocery icon on their mural, would mural. then code then kick it back to us because it's a painted it sign? Can we uh, basically pass a, a, an area variance that allows signage on the building to be up to a certain square footage? I believe that Angie said that the signage under the code is 48. Yeah. Proposing... This would be greater than the relief I'm asking for in the area. This would add 70 75 feet. 70. It would add, I'm asking for 22 square feet of relief on the south side. So this would add, it'd be 100 feet almost. It is 75 square feet on the south side. 
to be part of Kevin's installation, but it's and it's 22 feet larger for the um, regular building signage. No, for the whole building, I'm saying because we have a limit of is it 48 feet? Is it total signage or any one sign? So how is the food risk? Sales total. <laughs> Uh, the individual sign. Oh, no, maximum individual is 48. But if you just add that issue. I guess that's a decision for Carlo, but we can get through the the wall sign. Talk to Carlo. You can get the mural started. And then if you're painting the logo, the they may or may not kick you back. Two up. types of variants are it's a very similar intake form, right? And fill out a lot of the same questions. So yeah. could you kick the use variance to an area variance and grant that? And I'll still talk to Carlo about the details of it, but I do want to get Kevin started while the weather. <clears throat> Thank you. The, uh, one for the user and one for the user. Which so we just, see, I want to the and did you get my fees for the use variance? Left the thing. We dropped off the fees, so yeah, so we're we have all that done too. So if we are the one side is 22 feet, and the other side is. With 75 minus 48 would be 27 feet. So what happens to what happens to their the 60 the two legged if it's a 60? So how big is the south side of town? It's uh, 70 square 70 feet. Square feet. Yes, we will leave. So yes. if this is also 20, we will leave from 22, and then that means only 12. So 75 minus 12, 63 would be the excess or the requested relief. Leave from 22 on the south. Can we do that? Without a new application? I'm not sure. <laughs> so I would prefer to have a new application. So the new sign will be how many square feet? 70. That's the main 70. sign. The main sign. Well, they're close. It's 75 feet. Like Kevin and I measured it. It's a nine foot diameter circle. So it's a little bit less than 75. We round it up. Try. Okay. okay. If we just need to double back and do it again next month. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when the first one on the north side, 22 square feet relief. And oh, on the south side. South side is 22. Yeah. Other way around. No, it's the other way around. Yep. 22 square feet of relief on the south side and 63 square feet of relief on the north. Did I have a final draw or is this just made up? Yeah. No, he'll, he does a sketch and we can provide that to Carlo if he wants. We provide his sketch back to the. Oh, yeah. 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 He's a big fan of your. See, he knows. Did the one on the. On the uh, 
You did Browns too. Do we have a motion to convert this use variance to an area variance? Um, we should. <laughs> Application for a use variance. Right. Um, you want to do the sign on the um, south side first and get that out of yes. the way? Or, yeah. Okay. All right, I move to uh, approve the um, application for a uh, relief of 22 square feet uh, area uh, variance request uh, for the applicant um, with regards to uh, a branded wall sign. Um, on the south side. Um, the variance uh, will not create an undesirable change in the character of the neighborhood or be a detriment to nearby properties. Uh, uh, contrary to that, it's actually uh, uh, working towards uh, countering the, the a food desert situation, which is quite laudable. Um, and um, we also have the artist here who has shown his works in the building that we're in today. Um, the benefit sought by the applicant may not be uh, achieved by some feasible uh, method uh, to, uh, it, as, as he explained today, uh, to um, show his presence uh, or the, 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 the uh, groceries presence and thereby uh, uh, work towards um, countering uh, the food desert situation. Uh, the requested variance is not substantial um, and the variance if granted will not have an adverse effect or impact on physical environmental conditions in the neighborhood and the alleged difficulty is not self-created. Uh, I, I move uh, for approval of the um, uh, area variance based on those um, reasons. Second that motion. All in favor. Aye. Aye. One down. <laughs> Try the second one. You did it so well the first time. <laughs> <laughs> um, with regards to the application for a use variance for a uh, mural, um, on the um, uh, north side, um, I move to have the use variance um, converted to an area variance. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I oh, okay. <laughs> uh, for the details of that uh, motion, um, based you make it so. oh for the uh, okay what is to, now an area to support the now um, approved conversion correct motion is whether or not to approve the, the area, area variance area. that we've now approved the conversion of from use to area okay. So um, the uh, relief requested it, for the mural size is for a relief of 63 square feet. And uh, with the um, conditions or understanding that there would be no uh, specific product branding and uh, with a uh, maximum size of, uh, I think you said, 75 feet, right, of, of the ultimate um, product um, or the ultimate mural. Uh, the variance uh, as described and as conditioned will not create an undesirable change in the character of the neighborhood or be a detriment, again, for the same uh, reasons uh, discussed before, countering the food desert situation. 
uh, the benefits sought by the applicant may not be achieved by some uh, uh, feasible method other than the proposed variance. Again, due to the location and due to the current uh, food desert situation, uh, the requested variance is not substantial. And uh, the variance, if granted, will not have uh, an adverse effect or impact on the physical or environmental conditions in the neighborhood or district. Again, we have the uh, artist here who has done work on the building that uh, we're in today. And uh, so we know uh, what it will, the, the, the quality of the work. Quality of work, thank you. Um, and uh, lastly, uh, the alleged difficulty is not self created uh, The existence of the uh, food desert situation is uh, acknowledged. Um, based on, on those uh, um, reasons, uh, I move to approve uh, this uh, area of areas. Second the motion. Uh, I'd like to make a quick amendment just to clarify that this area variance directly relates to um, the bargain grocery icon on the building and that the mural itself would be referred to code enforcement for permit approval. My motion is so amended. Second. All in favor of the amendment? Aye. Aye. All in favor of the motion? Aye. As amended, sorry. <laughs> Aye. Aye. I just said I. All right. We're good. We're good. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right. Thanks for bearing with us. Um. Anything else? Like to move, we adjourn. Second that motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 We are adjourned. <laughs>